So in this video, we're going to be focusing on finishing up the uh, core, getting the core um, resources deployed as far as the management groups, the uh, architecture around the uh, landing zones, and then anything uh, as far as uh, the identity subscription goes. There's nothing that gets deployed in there, but you would typically probably put like uh, things like your DCs, key vaults, and um, stuff like that inside of the identity subscription. Um, once that gets set up, that's pretty much it for this part. And essentially you can start to deploy some of these other resources that are grayed out as far as landing zones. Um, but now you have your architecture and policies needed to get things deployed in the uh, right way. So let's finish up on this here. So um, if you haven't checked out the last four videos, we've basically been working through these three files and we're now down to our fourth one. And the reason for them to be broken up is this LZ vending one is to basically uh, create subscriptions. The second one is for the connectivity resources um, and then the management resources and then the core architecture. So now we're going to create a uh, file called main.tf. And we pulled the notes up because there's going to be a lot of... Uh, stuff and I don't want to type everything out so let me pull this up here again all right so we got our main.tf and we got our outputs quite a bit of stuff here all right so inside of our main.tf I'm going to use the same module that we use in all the other particular um, folders it's just now we got to change a couple things again so I'm going to set this to 366 Uh, our core, our backend is going to be the core.tf state. So it's going to be a local state file. We're going to be pulling our current conf client configuration from this uh, data block. The version of this module, we're going to use 4.1.0. So again, you want to make sure all of your modules are using the same version. So there's no discrepancies in what's getting deployed and what's available and what's not available. And then basically we're going to also create our variables file. So variables. And then so inside of there, we're basically going to put some things that we need to make sure is set up. So the root ID is going to be whatever you want to set. This is what's going to append to the resources that you're um, deploying. Uh, root name can be, this is what's going to be the root name of your uh, management groups. So I'm just going to call this, let me tech you. And then primary location, central U.S., secondary. And then we're not subscription ID, oh, for identity. So my identity subscription is going to be. Pull this up here. Now, uh, one thing to note too is if you're on a if you're on a, just a customer agreement account, uh, basically like a you know account that you created to do some labbing with, you only get so many subscriptions you can create programmatically. I believe it's around five or so. Um, once you hit that mark, then I think you got to call customer support to. Um, maybe get it reset in case you didn't know. So just a FYI in case you're adding and deleting um, subscriptions. So we got all of our variables set up. So um, now we want to go back into our main.tf and make sure everything else here. So basically, as you can see, oh, and then, so we got this uh, library path and what this is for is Inside of our modules here, I'll go into a, another one. There's these, another, so there's art types and inside this art types folder, there's a, you know, you got definitions, assignments, policy definitions, but there's custom art types that can be created um, to 
facilitate for the different types of assignments, policy definitions, and things that you want to set. And that's what these other folders are for. And what you can do is you can actually copy these and put them into your own um, folder uh, structure. And then that way you can kind of edit the policies that are already defined. So what I'm going to do is I actually like to just kind of copy this and put this at the root. Well, actually, I'll wait till we'll do an, an initialize. So I'll take it from the fourth one, the core here. So what we are going to do is we're going to create a file called settings dot core dot tf and inside of here we're going to create some um custom archetypes so basically if we look back at this picture here that i bring back we can see that there's sap corp you know online well you may not want these particular namings for your landing zones you may want you know production you may want development so this what is what allows you to do this so we're going to create a local file and it's called custom landing zones and I'm going to call this production and this root ID is going to be the LMTY that's that variable that we created so the display name it's going to be called production as well and I'm going to say parent management group ID is going to be And for this one, it's going to be development. Actually, let's keep those landing zones. So uh, development here. And then development here as well. All right, so now the archetype ID here is what's uh, going to define basically what gets set. Now, uh, what, I, what I don't want to get into too deep is, which I'll maybe do in another video, is some of these parameters are basically set to allow you to define things like, you know, um, not allowing public IP or, you know, RDP ports to be enabled on VMs or NSGs or uh, only allowing certain types of locations to be deployed in those resource groups, things like that. So we can see here they have these set on this one, but then up here they're not. So what I'm going to do is there is an archetype ID of default empty. And that's going to basically not deploy anything. And that's actually a good thing to kind of do if you want to just do this for testing purposes um, as you're learning some of the things because it does uh, deploy quite a bit of resources. So actually what we'll do is we need to create another, we need to create a folder called lib and that's where that will live. Um, and that's where that, inside the main.tf, this path.module.live looks for. If you don't utilize this um, and you have it out, if you basically blank that out, it's going to um, use the default resources uh, that the module creates, which is uh, quite a bit. So with uh, now the deploy core landing zones equals true, um, custom landing zones is the local dot custom landing zones. And then let's go back down now. See, now this is where, uh, the, um, the identity resources gets, um, basically configured, which there aren't any resources that really get, you know, um, deployed or actually created. And then now, as you can see is we've been deploying our management and connectivity resources already. It's using the remote state data block to grab the outputs of our subscription, our configuration and the ID. So basically that's why these must be ran before this can run because if it ran, it wouldn't see anything or know where to put, um, there wouldn't have any subscriptions to put anywhere. 
So let's go ahead and oh, and then our settings.core, we got that set up. And then variables. But what I'm going to do is let's see in my notes here if we had any other things we need to add. Um, I think that's it here. So we're going to go ahead and initialize this. Actually, that's the wrong folder. So now that that gets initialized, let's give that a second here. And actually just to kind of show that uh, archetype in in uh in action i'm going to create a file called archetype definition customer online and just to kind of show how that does work so if we look here there is a customer online um uh block there and that's what's defined in our settings.core for the archetype id so that's the id of this archetype config and it's basically the parameters it's going to deny resource locations the list of allow locations is var our primary location secondary location and then deny resource group location is the list of allow locations equals var dot primary and var dot secondary so if we look back at our main.tf again that's where this lib folder um, defines where things are lives at. So as you add more stuff here, like I said, you can uh, make them nicer and keep them in folders. If you want to look at an example, just look at the archetypes and how they have them in here. So now what we're going to do is a Terraform plan. Oh, uh, we need our probably our default location. Forgot about that. Uh, let's just throw that in here. Um, the data resource Terraform remote state has not. Oh, we need to save that. Oh, actually, I need to create that one second here. So basically, we need to create a new file. Oops. So outputs.tf, and what's going to go in that is, actually, I could have probably named it remote. So let's do that. Because we're basically just grabbing our remote files. So as you can see here, we're just defining where our connectivity and data um, sources live. So as you can see, it's uh, the we basically need to tell it where it's living at. So the management one lives in three underscore management. And the connectivity is in two underscore management. So it's basically from the path.module, it's going back a folder, and it's then it's going into that folder and looking for that state file. Um, oh, configure identity resources. So let's do a new file, call this settings.identity.tf. And let me see all my notes here. Yep. And then basically this is going to enable deny subnet without NHG false. This says, uh, this is just a, a note taken from um, the GitHub repo. So we got that saved. Oh, let's make sure it's saved and then run this again. 
So it's reading our remote states, um, remote state connectivity and management. It's going through, seeing everything that needs to be deployed. And as you can see here, I left that out. So I wanted to show you. So it's it's a lot. So 219 to be exact of things that's going to be deployed. So what I'm going to do is um, show you how if you want to just do this in a uh, testing way of not having to deploy all these resources, you can take this module. And just want to show you what it's called. There's a default empty one here. So default empty is the ID. So what we can do is actually let's take this and copy it. And we'll throw this in here. And we'll go to our settings file and we'll change this to empty and default empty and uh, that's just to keep this simple again uh, we probably did in that case we really didn't need this um, uh, where is it at here? Should have been another file that we had. Oh yeah, the settings.core. Um, yeah, we didn't need to basically define these parameters. We're gonna take this out. It should be fairly quick. Shouldn't be too many things if it recognizes. You know, it might actually be looking for the folder path. Let me, let me look at uh, something here. Okay, so what I ended up having to do was um, Basically go into, uh, so I need to blank all these out because it was going to try and deploy a ton of resources, as you can see, if I can scroll up, 215. And for this demo, I didn't want to kind of go through that. I'm going to do another video that kind of talks more about these archetype definitions and, and assigning these to the management groups and landing zones and things like that. So uh, what I ended up doing was going into this module and taking... Uh, the art type this folder and just copying it into this folder and what I had to do is I just blanked out all the values and just set them to um, basically nothing and that's why on my settings.core I'm using the default empty art type ID and we'll go back in and show how to then manage and update and do some things like that but I uh, just want to basically get this deployed here So running the Terraform apply after um, the plan, it shouldn't take too long to create the management group and structure that we need. So now that that's getting created, um, it's gonna pull in all the uh, values and everything that's already been deployed from our management and connectivity subscriptions. It's gonna create our landing zone, um, our uh, management groups and the different levels that we uh, decided as far as even from our custom landing zones. So if we pull up our portal here, it's going to show, go back to management groups. We now have, let me tech you, our landing zones, and then the development and production, and then our platform landing zones. If we refresh this, we should start to see our subscriptions pulling in. 
Working on saying manager group. Oh, uh, let's see what's going on here. Engine group LMTY already exists. So oh, let's see, maybe we need to change. Now let's try and go. It's almost like it's trying to run. If I refresh my subscriptions aren't in there. Hmm, so it, already, it thinks that these aren't already, so let me go ahead and remove these. Let me make sure I didn't already have these before. I didn't think I did, but let's, let's do a quick delete. Remove these, let me get these deleted and then come back here. All right, so yeah, I got past the initial config. I didn't really do anything. The only thing I did was delete my manager groups and re-add them. Um, so it might've just been like some race uh, between you know something getting deployed and it already noticing something being created. So I've seen Terraform do that before where you run it the first time and run it again, it'll just magically start working. So, uh, so now with that being said, if we go back to the portal here, we will show that my subscriptions and Everything has been brought into the correct uh, management group correctly. Um, we got connectivity under connectivity, identity under identity, and management under management. Uh, and then landing zones will be where your other subscriptions will reside. And that's where you can do some, go into our file here. If we go inside the settings, uh, you can definitely put in some, you know, ways to pull in the uh, correct uh, IDs that you want. So it could be multiple IDs. So as you create subscri subscriptions, depending on where you want those deployed, you can also manage those from there. So again, that's it there. Uh, what I will say is it makes it a lot easier now to manage this. So let's say, for instance, I want to remove some resources from connectivity. Well, I don't need to now run through management in the core platform uh, um, subscriptions to do any of that. So I can essentially go back into my second folder and run a Terraform destroy. And now all of my resources that are in there, I can get rid of and the great thing about this is it's not going to destroy anything outside of uh, just connectivity resources. My subscription is going to stay. Now, obviously, we do you uh, um, lose out on the ID that gets deployed here, but. Um, I'm destroying everything. So of course in a traditional network or environment, you're not going to do that. You're going to just, you know, just remove whatever hubs or whatever you're going to, um, get rid of. So, um, me, I'm just doing this for cost savings purposes. So I'm getting rid of the, um, hub VNet and everything in the peerings. So it, it, theoretically, if I ran this, it's going to see that that it can't see the ID anymore and it's going to move the subscription out of the uh, appropriate management group. So I'd recommend doing that if you're just doing this for testing. But again, if you're in a production network, I would not recommend doing a Terraform destroy. You should go into the settings connectivity file and just remove and replace what you're going to be looking at or, or not needing. 
and then you can do a Terraform apply. And then that way you can still continue to get the outputs and things that you need for the other modules. Again, if you have any questions in regards to any of this, drop me a comment down below. Um, I'm sure there's probably more questions. I tried not to make this too long. So I, I uh, sped up a lot of the, um, you know, coding portion of it. But I, like I said, I'll put this on GitHub. If you have any questions um, as far as the setup and deployment, uh, let me know and I'll be sure to help where I can. Again, thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you next time.